Welcome back to the End Time Remnant YouTube channel. This is Dorothy and today is August 3rd, 2024. I pray all of you have entered into the month of August prayerful, hopeful, and expectant of a mighty move from the Lord on your behalf. God bless each and every one of you. Um, I pray that you are all doing well. What a time to be alive, church. We are living in the times that were prophesied so long ago, and while it is an exciting time, it is most certainly a time to be vigilant and sober. And so that's what led me to make this particular video. Um, it's probably a little bit before 11 o'clock in the morning where I am. The sun is shining. It is an amazingly beautiful day outside. And before I go be part of things, I wanted to make this video and post it. Um, just praying that it'll reach whomever it needs to reach and that it will bless you, that it will help you. If you are, if you are somebody that um, has been struggling in this particular area of idolatry, <laughs> um, that it will bless you and help you. So about five months ago, I did a video called, But They Wanted a King. In it, um, I used scripture to serve as an example and a warning of what happened to the children of Israel when they demanded God give them a human king. I will post that link in the description box um, for those of you who have not had an opportunity to watch it. I feel like if you watch that and this, um, it may kind of give a more holistic picture and just really help um, just kind of bring truth to light. That's what I'm here to do today. Up until that point of the children of Israel asking for a human king. It's important for us to remember that it was God who brought them out of Egypt. It was God who provided for them in the wilderness. It was God who fed them. It was God who protected them. God even fought for them. We see that in the book of Joshua when it says that God sent hailstones down to help kill the enemies of the children of Israel. They lacked nothing. They wanted nothing. And yet they rejected God and they decided that they wanted a human king because they wanted to be like the other nations. All the other nations had a physical human king in the earth. Um, and that's what the children of Israel wanted. They wanted to be like those other nations. They wanted a king like those other nations. But in doing so, in requesting and demanding that they have a human king, they were positioning themselves to idolize a man instead of giving all thanks and praise to God. And so that's where they went terribly wrong. In that video that I made, I specifically talked about the quote unquote kings and queens of the church. These are the pastors, the prophets, the preachers, and the teachers that the church seems to idolize so much these days. These are the leaders that the people of God are looking to for answers, for permission, for approval, direction right? Instead of reading the word of God and being consistent about cultivating personal relationship with the Lord, the church is in idolatry and busy depending on the words of bishop or prophetess. I took my time on that video because I wanted to expose the dangers that come along with wanting a quote unquote king to idolize more than we want God. There is a danger that comes along with that. And today I want to take my time and talk about another type of idolatry that is front and center right now front and center right now and it is the idolatry of politicians nothing has been more concerning than what i've seen and heard on social media these past few weeks okay i'm talking about blood wash believers people who claim to be part of the body of christ people who claim to be the ecclesia and the bride of christ making videos and leaving comments that illustrate a distorted understanding and lack of wisdom of what is actually happening in the earth right now none of us know it all we are not god None of us have all the answers. We are not God. But there are certainly signs being given that we are at the end of the age. And there is certainly um, a consistency in the spirit of acceleration. Things are speeding up and things are changing rapidly. If you cannot feel that, I really don't know what to say. I feel like maybe you're disconnected and you're not in the secret place as much as you need to be. Um, but there's no way that you are part of the ecclesia and you cannot feel the acceleration in the spirit, the warfare in the spirit. Things are speeding up. Okay. So when it comes to these politics on one side, there are self-professing followers of Christ who can't wait to run to the polls and vote for Kamala Harris. God is opening doors for women. They say she is our only chance. They say. She's um, going to make sure that we were able to keep our freedoms, right? On the other side, there are self-professing followers of Christ who can't wait to run to the polls and vote for Donald Trump. He's our last chance, they say. God is going to use Trump to save America, 
they say. If he doesn't win, we're doomed, they say. Right. All this clearly shows a level of deception within the body of Christ that must be addressed. So I'm going to do my very best to do that on this video. Far too many in the body of Christ actually believe that it matters who gets into office and that if America chooses correctly, she will somehow avoid the catastrophe and judgment due her. Well, I am not God, but let me share what I know according to what the Lord has revealed to me. America is under judgment and the person in office, right, whoever is voted in office will not be able to stop the judgment that is coming to America. However... I do believe based on who is elected or who is put in office, America may be able to buy herself a little bit of time and that time will be used to cry out, repent and prepare for the inevitable before it happens, right? And the inevitable is catastrophe and judgment. There's no two ways about that. Neither candidate will save America from what is coming to her shores. Not at all. Not at all. Okay, it's coming, regardless of who's at the helm. There is a great deception enveloping the church right now. Blinded eyes, deafened ears, and tons of idolatry that violate the very first of the Ten Commandments. I want the church to know something. Okay, regardless of who wins, America's judgment will go forth. Regardless of who wins, America will have to pay for what she has done. And regardless of who wins, Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings and soon to return. Church, we need to humble ourselves during this very critical time. We need to be in fasting and prayer to ask the Lord what his will is for the earth during this time. And if you feel compelled to go to the polls and vote at all, before you make up in your mind who you are voting for based on your own personal likes, dislikes, and intellect, you, the body of Christ, have a responsibility to seek the Lord for his will. Your vote should be exactly who he tells you to vote for. We are the representation of Christ on the earth. When we got saved, we traded in our old lives and our own personal agendas to advance the kingdom of God in the earth. We don't have the right to run to the polls and vote for someone based on what we want to see, right? Oh, you want to vote one way because you want to you want to see the first female president. You want to see the first female black president, right? Oh, and you want to run to the polls because you want to um, vote for the one who talks about Jesus every now and again, right? Have we ever stopped long enough to consider that both of them may actually be crooked? Have we ever stopped to consider that perhaps neither one of them truly love God or have God's will in mind? Have we ever stopped to consider the fact that just because one of them may mention God, that doesn't mean they're sold out to Christ. It doesn't mean that they're saved. But more than that, would, would you be willing to refer to scripture and see how God continually used pagan and worldly figures to accomplish his goals in the earth? Listen. If you go to the book of Esther, you'll read about King Aswaris or King Xerxes, right? This is the king who married Esther. He played a very significant role in saving Israel, God's people. He didn't know he was being used to preserve their lives, but he was being used to preserve their lives. There's also King Darius, right? He was very instrumental in helping Israel rebuild the temple. He provided the provision. He provided the protection that they needed to handle business. He was in full support of them, right? There's also King Cyrus. He allowed the children of Israel to return to their homeland and rebuild the holy city of, Israel, of Jerusalem, right? This was a pagan king. These were pagan kings. These were not people submitted to God. You've got to understand that. However, these men were used by God during a very critical time for the benefit of God's people. One plus one has never equaled 11, church. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And the problem is, we have all these self-professing followers of Christ who don't read the word of God. They are biblically illiterate, and as a result, they are open to deception of epic proportion. Ready to make moves based on what they think. Ready to make moves based on how they feel. Right? But Proverbs 21.1 is something that I want to give you. It says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turns it 
wherever he wishes. Please don't miss this biblical truth, church. God is in control. Okay, God has used the least likely people to accomplish his will in the earth before and he can and most certainly will do it again if that's what he chooses. Like you've got to be serious. You looking for perfect people, right? You looking for people that, that, you know, quote unquote, seem godly. <laughs> None of us are godly without the help of the Holy Spirit, right? The Bible says if, if any man calls himself good, he's a liar. If any man says that he's without sin, he's a liar. And the truth ain't in him. All of us got some stuff with us. This video isn't about attempting to persuade you to vote one way or the other. You have to know that. This video is to remind you of the truth. Judgment on America is a sure thing, but as the body of Christ, we have an obligation to allow our Lord and Savior to lead us on what way to vote, to lead us on what to do, right? Your vote has got to be cast solely based on who the Lord instructs you to vote for, not your emotions or your intellect. Even if the Lord tells you straight up and down, don't even go to the polls. You got to be willing to obey. If he tells you to vote for somebody that, that actually surprises you, you got to be willing to obey. Proverbs 16.25 reads, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. You know what I mean? A lot of people think they know everything. The spirit of pride is, is, is running rampant in the church right now. Everybody thinks they know, right? There's so much we can't see. God is omnipresent. We're not. God is omnipotent. We're not. We're not all knowing. We're not in every room at every time. God is in these meetings with them. His eyes go to and fro. While we're sleeping, he's not. He hears what these devils are planning in these quiet rooms. <laughs> he knows the hearts of man. No one's pulling the wool over his eyes, right? One way or the other. One way or the other, I see a lot of flesh in the body of Christ and not nearly enough dependence on godly wisdom during this very critical time. And so with that said, I want to make sure I choose my words wisely as I impart some knowledge that I had to learn. I had to learn it over time. I had to learn it that we clearly need in the body of Christ. More specifically, wisdom that m women and people of color need. Okay. <laughs> One of my favorite movies of all time is Troy, um, and it came out in 2004, and it starred Brad Pitt and Eric Bana. I thought it was a phenomenal movie. Um, there was a city named Troy, um, and it had never been defeated because their enemies could not breach their walls. So if you look at this picture, in this particular scene of the movie, tons of enemy soldiers came to the shores of Troy to fight and destroy them, but they could not get into the city due to the fortified walls. Okay, there's actually a scene in the movie where the skilled archers of Troy defeat their enemies by firing a storm of arrows from above, right on top of the wall. And in this particular scene, um, their enemies lose that that battle. And they begin to retreat back toward the water. And these enemies of Troy pretend to run away in defeat, but in actuality, we're crafting a plan to get behind the walls of Troy. And so you may say, well, how? How are they going to get past that really tall, solid wall? Well, the answer is by presenting the king of Troy with a gift. Okay, it was a horse made up of broken ship pieces. It looked like a peace offering. It looked like the enemy had bowed in defeat. To the ignorant king and his council, it looked like the enemy had run off like a whipped dog and wouldn't be back. And when they first find the horse along the beach with no soldiers in sight, they immediately thought it was a gift and a sign from the gods, lowercase g. Obviously, they were into Greek gods and goddesses during that time. In this particular scene, the young prince tells his father to burn the horse. He says, no, it's not a gift. Burn it. Right. This young man had the discernment to know that this was not a gift at all. But because he was young and because they felt like, you know, he doesn't know anything. And because he was outnumbered, they accused him of mocking the gods. And they rolled that horse back behind the walls of Troy. 
Interestingly enough, as they're rolling the horse back behind the walls, there's a scene in the movie where all of the city is celebrating and cheering. All of the people are super excited to, to bring this horse back behind the walls. How exciting. Look at this amazing gift. You know, we defeated our enemies and look at the parting gift they left us. They ran home to lick their wounds. We win. Victory is ours. No, no, that wasn't the reality at all. Okay, because that night, while all the people of Troy were asleep, a few of the enemy soldiers who were hiding inside of the horse climbed out and went to open the front gates of Troy. And once the front gates were open, all of the other soldiers who'd only pretended to go home in defeat came right through the front gates. Right from there, they proceeded to murder the people of Troy, took some women and children as captive, murdered the king and his councilmen, and burned Troy to the ground. So you may be saying, Dorothy, look, I didn't come on here for a movie review or a synopsis. What is your point? Well, church, there is a lesson here, and I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you don't miss it. The Trojan horse tactic is old. It has been used in warfare for ages, and it is being used right now. Follow me. Kamala Harris is being presented as some type of gift to women. She'll make sure women can have all the reproductive freedoms they want. Their bodies, their choices, right? Right. Free to abort millions of babies each year with no pushback from the government. How exciting, right? Kamala Harris is being presented as some type of gift to people of color. She'll be the first Asian woman president. Her mother is Indian. Isn't this exciting? Uh, she is being presented as a gift to the people of the Caribbean. She'll be the first president of Jamaican heritage. Her father was Jamaican. Isn't this exciting? Right? Kamala Harris is being presented as some type of gift to black women. Right? She'll be the first black woman president. Add to that, she is part of a Greek sorority. She will be the first black woman president, and she's an AKA. She wears chucks and pearls. She wears pink and green, and she graduated from Howard University, a historically black college. How exciting. How exciting. Listen to me. This government has a habit of using the Trojan horse strategy to accomplish their evil agendas, and this is nothing new. But I took the time today to speak to a certain people who always seem to drink the Kool-Aid because they always put color and culture over the kingdom of God every single time. It's always this because this person looks like me or because this person has this in common with me or because this is my soror or because of black girl magic or because it's Jamaican. Right. Right. Or because it's yo, there's always something that we identify with. Right. And they use that to get that Trojan horse behind the wall. What is the wall? The wall is your fortified protection, your discernment, your right thinking. It's what keeps you safe. They need the horse behind the wall. They need to penetrate that discernment somehow and how do they do that by presenting you with something that looks like a gift but it is actually something that is going to be your own demise I hope you hear me I hope you hear me <laughs> on June 17th 2015 a young man by the name of Dylan Roof entered into a church Bible study in Charleston, South Carolina, and he killed nine people there. On June 25th, President Obama gives the eulogy at a church in Charleston, South Carolina. And as he walks up to the podium, you can hear the idolaters, the church folks in the audience clapping and cheering him on. The first words out of his mouth are giving all praise and honor to God. Listen, take your time. Go on YouTube. They got videos of this stuff. Look it up. Okay. The first words out of his mouth are giving all praise and honor to God. Again, that's June 25th. Okay. Of 2015. The very next day, that would be June 26th of 2015. He can be seen and heard at a press conference in the Rose Garden at the White House 
claiming the Supreme Court's decision to affirm the constitutional right of same-sex couples to marry was a quote-unquote victory for America that has made our union a little more perfect. So on June 25th, it's giving all praise and honor to God, right? On June 26th, it's same-sex couples, right, legally being able to marry is victory for America. But no, no, it wasn't a victory for America. Whether people want to realize it or not, this move got God's attention and not in a good way. It wasn't a victory for America. It was the beginning of America's judgment. Okay? Barack Obama was the 44th president in American history. Absolutely none of his predecessors touched gay marriage with a 10-foot pole. Not a Republican or Democrat pushed this agenda. But the elite saw an opportunity to use the black president to rebel against the divine order of God. The LGBTQIA community in Hollywood has a lot of money, okay? And they backed his campaign financially because they wanted him in office to do their bidding. Black people? Well, we were just here to make it all possible by ensuring all of our votes went behind him because he looked like us. Trojan horse, okay? Because over the next eight years of his presidency, nothing about how black people were treated in this country changed. What do you mean, Dorothy? Well, Trayvon Martin happened. Eric Garner happened. Mike Brown happened. Sandra Bland happened. Philando Castile happened. Tamir Rice happened. Walter Scott happened. And a whole bunch of other names that never even made it to mainstream news. Okay, all this injustice happened while a black president was in office for eight years. So that's why I call it a Trojan horse right? To black people who voted for him just because he was black, because they thought that he was going to do something amazing for black people. In the natural, it looked like a gift. But it was actually very intentional positioning by Satan to put this country in spiritual bondage and push demonic agendas through a prideful government leader. And just how did this Trojan horse get past the walls? Courtesy of the ignorant people who received this seeming once-in-a-lifetime gift behind their walls and then foolishly celebrated their own demise. I was one of them. I voted for him twice. Nothing has changed, church. The stakes are higher than they've ever been. Financial collapse must happen. War and destruction must happen. Death on a massive scale to evoke fear must happen. Whatever the next pandemic they got cooking up in a lab somewhere to release must happen. All of this evil must take place as the Antichrist makes his grand entrance in the form of a human being to pretend to be a hero. But listen, you must begin to see through your spiritual, not natural eyes. And that can't happen if you are more tuned into mainstream media than you are in the secret place. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. The news stories on television are designed to force feed you deception in order to shape your perspective and influence your decision making. That's why it's called television programming. Okay, for those in the body of Christ who feel led to vote in the upcoming election. Listen, if there's even an election, you don't even know what kind of foolery they about to pull. (laughs) One can only imagine right? You are obligated to be Holy Spirit led as you cast your vote, not led according to what you think you know. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 comes to mind. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. Align yourself with the will of God when it comes to this election. You hear what I say? But most importantly, don't be found in idolatry. Jeremiah 17, 5 is applicable today as it ever was. It reads, cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. There are curses associated with trusting more in the strength of man than the power of God to protect you. Neither candidate or political party is our quote unquote only chance. Jesus Christ is our only chance. And this is something we cannot forget, church, by allowing ourselves to be distracted by the lights, camera, and action of politics right now. The world is a stage. And there is so much more than meets the eye. We don't know the half of what is going on in this nation and globally, what these folks got planned for humanity. We don't even know. We need to seek the Lord for answers. And don't be like the rebellious children of Israel who were so adamant about having a a human king that they rejected God. We cannot afford to reject God another day. 
We cannot afford to place our trust in either candidate. No man, no woman, no government, no system. It's God and God alone. And I recognize that this video has been a little long, but I came to tell you that my 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 spirit has been so grieved by what I've seen and heard on social media. Folks in the church are really doing way too much. They're doing way too much. They they genuinely seem to think that either one of these people are going to be their ticket out of judgment. What a joke. Read the word. The book of Revelation still has to pop off. Mystery Babylon has a lot coming to her. And I firmly believe that that is precisely what America is. Um, yeah, I, I, I wanted to take my time and just really share my heart with you and share what I'm seeing, share what I'm hearing, and just really give you something to think about and something to get before the Lord about and pray about. The Trojan horse is a real thing, man. Again, I am talking to women, right? All of y'all with that woman, woman, I am woman, hear me roar, right? Jezebel type, feminist type, all over you, okay? <laughs> all over you. Woman, 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 right? Okay. I'm talking to those of you who are people of color. I understand what our history is. Okay, how we have been treated in the United States of America. I understand how you could want to see um, black leadership, but we've already had black leadership. And so my question to you is uh, just how much has your life changed as a result of that black leadership? Right. These are just questions. I know all of you who have graduated from HBCUs and, um, you know, those of you who are part of the divine nine. Oh, so exciting. Right. Pink and green, pink and green, chucks and pearls. Right. There's so much at stake. There's so much at stake here. Um, and my prayer is that the church will not drink the Kool-Aid, that we will not be part of the ignorant population who just doesn't get it. You know, get in the secret place, spend less time watching television and more time asking the Lord what his desire is for you um, in terms of voting, what his desire is for you in terms of prayer. You know, what should we be praying for? What is his will? We, we have to know his will in order to pray it and expect it to, to touch down in the earth realm. We have to know what he wants. Who do you want to see in office, Father? Do you even want me to vote? And if you want me to vote, who do you want me to vote for? I am going to vote the way that you say vote because you are sovereign and you know exactly the plans that you have. And I want to align myself with your plans. Woe to the people who plan to go to vote based on their emotions and how they feel. Right. Because as you cast your vote, you're actually coming into agreement with whatever that candidate stands for. Right. And I'm just really surprised that so many people in the body of Christ. Um, whatever support abortion or whatever support gay marriage, or drag queens and all this stuff that is legit sin, according to the word of God. It's not about our opinions or how we feel about it personally. The word of God speaks. Let God be true and every man a liar. We don't get to remix the word of God. So it's not even about how you feel about a particular person. I'm just shocked that so many people in the body of Christ just seem to be confused. There's a, there's a level of deception and confusion that has just really overtaken many. Um, but anyway, I don't want this video to be too long. Um, that's all I have for you. Um, I pray in the name of Jesus that this video will reach whomever it is for. Um, if nothing else, it will cause you to get into the prayer closet and seek the Lord. That's really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to think. I'm trying to get you to stop. I'm trying to get you to think. And I'm trying to get you to seek the Lord. Um, because we cannot lean on our own understanding. We can't. This is, this is not the time for us to lean on what we think we know. Um, it's the time to seek the Lord for, for his perfect will. And so that's all I have for you on this video. And God willing, I will see you next time.